we didn't go in with high expectations. We went in with high hopes because it was Holy Week. But never in our wildest dreams did we expect to see not only the script, the acting, but the cinematography, the whole convergence of these professional levels was so excellent. And I noticed it, but I don't have that kind of eye that the kids have. And uh, they were sort of uh, taken by surprise at, uh, again, the scripting. <laughs> this doesn't stink. Wait a second. We could, <laughs> we might finish an episode. <laughs> yeah. And after the second or third episode, we would have put this up there next to our favorite shows. I mean, wow. and so, uh, I mean, I can think of the two or three things that stand out in my own mind. And again, I, I don't remember what I might have mentioned to you in our phone conversations. But for me, you know, I teach scripture. And here at the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology, we're all about connecting the old and the new, um, but also connecting the Jewish roots of first century Palestinian culture, Roman occupation, but most especially the ragtag outfit of personalities that form the disciples. And, you know, how in the world are you going to depict Jesus in a compelling way? Well, thank God you do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And it's grace of God. I, I, I of give all glory to him, you know. Yeah, but at one level, you know, the, the, the scripting is done by people who have obviously pondered the New Testament and have lived in the Gospels because there is a, a, a kind of symphonic weaving of the synoptic Gospels and the Johannine in a way that biblical scholars would usually say, well, no, no, that's, uh, you, you really, it's, it's neither fish nor fowl. You've got to do one or the other. But uh, the, uh, the depiction of Nicodemus, for example, it is really only in John. Uh, and the uh, the Lucan account of uh, of Peter. I mean, you can tell that Dallas Jenkins and that whole team have lived, have soaked in the scriptures. Uh, yeah. But also, it's like the Roman occupation, first century culture, <laughs> and your Palestinian dialect too. <laughs> Do you have a favorite scene? I'm sure you get asked that, and. Uh, you know, I have a couple. It's hard to narrow it down to one, but I I think. Well, there's three that I go that are my go-to that that hit me first. The first one is is my entrance and the healing of Mary Magdalene. Um, that was so Everybody's powerful to favorite. shoot. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was super powerful to to, to film, um, and then to watch it after it was edited and uh, uh, you know it was emotional as we were like for everybody, the director for Dallas for everybody just getting ready to do that and then. You know, we kind of felt like, wow, oh, this is going to be a strong scene. And then to see it in the context with the music and everything, it just over the top. Um, so that's the first one. This, the, the second one is sort of a bookend. It's the, the last scene, the woman at the well. I had such joy filming that. Um, and uh, I had such a, a, a beautiful and uh, uh, just open scene partner, Vanessa De Silvio, who played the, the Samaritan woman at the well. Uh, and it was just like a dance, you know, just two people dancing and, and just being open and seeing where the spirit and the, the lines obviously were guiding us uh, and then seeing where the spirit moved us in that way. And then every time she runs off, I literally just feel such a deep joy watching her run. And she's like, bye, you know, and she's like, see what this man has told me. Um, it just it fills me with joy every time I watch it. Um and, and, and the filming of that was, it was a, a, one of the more simple setups that we had to do it was literally just a tent over a well. Um, there were no special effects. There was nothing crazy, no distract, like the few, as an actor, the fewer distractions on a set, the better, the more we can lock into the emotional intention of what has to happen to be free of tension uh, and to just be able to just have a, a sort of a, a meditative approach to, to how we work. And it is. Then it's in so simple. It's so deep. Yeah. Yeah. And then in, in between those two or the third would be um, uh, John 316, the scene with Nicodemus on the rooftop was, you know, just shooting that scene for we did, did that in the whole day. Actually, I was watching a video I took, which maybe I'll release at some point in one of my little video diaries of... Um, it was on July 4th we shot that uh, of last year. And uh, it was, I think, the end of the week of that first week, um, filming episodes five through eight. Uh, so, so it was, you know, the whole, the whole day was spent just doing that scene. 
and uh, getting to work with uh, Eric Avari, who plays Nicodemus, was just lovely. And saying those words and having that experience and trying to communicate, you know, to the best of my limited ability, what what God is saying through those words in in the person as Jesus Christ is just profound. I, I luckily I didn't think too much about what it was because I probably wouldn't have been able to get through the scene being like, what am I doing here? I, you know. Yeah, you know, I love that because, you know, everybody knows John 316 from football stadiums and whatnot. And then to hear those lines delivered in the context of this 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 friendship, this relationship that is really opening up. And I I love the way he plays Nicodemus. You know, my heart exploded. To hear John 316, what a cliche, come on. But a balloon burst, it was sort of hearing it for the first time, you know. And I can also relate to Nicodemus because he's a scholar. And he recognizes that his colleagues are almost all skeptical or critical. And, you know, as a scholar, as an academic, but as someone who longs to know what is Jesus up to, you know, really? Um, how do you strike that balance? And you could just see the awkwardness and yet the uh, the longing in his heart and yet the fear about his reputation. And, you know, I, I really enjoyed his playing a role, which suddenly doesn't feel like he's playing a role, but making Nicodemus so more than plausible. Suddenly, I mean, he just popped off the pages of the Gospel of John and, and really struck me in the heart. The other thing, of course, is... Uh, Peter, I mean, and the catch of fish. <laughs> I, I think yeah. that is almost everybody's favorite too. And especially because you make it so plausible in terms of the tax. And I won't ruin it for those who haven't seen it, but you want to see it yeah. because by the time, you know, the, the hall of fish comes in and everything comes together and, and Matthew's background role as well as the tax collector, you know, yeah. again, hearts explode. And at the same time, my biblical mind is sort of like, wow, <laughs> Eureka. I mean, that is the most plausible way to interweave all of these different passages. Someone has been living in the gospel slightly longer than me, and I'm glad to sit and learn, you know. And so thanks be to God for that as well. 